J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens a program with You Can't Have Everything from the picture of the same name. <laughs> Many folks who live in the country declare that October is their favorite month of the year. I certainly agree with them because it's the month of the most varied colors. But no matter where you live, in the country or in the city, the same cheerfulness of October colors can be reflected right in your own dining room with the most colorful dessert in the world, Jell-O. Every one of Jell-O's six delicious flavors has its own beautiful and distinctive color. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. They're gay and glowing and appetizing to look at, and they have the grandest flavor in the world. For Jell-O has that extra rich fruit flavor, so luscious and satisfying. But remember, there's only one Jell-O, and only genuine Jell-O brings you that grand extra rich fruit flavor. So don't accept any substitutes. Look for the big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for the second broadcast of the new series, we bring you by popular demand and public acclaim, our latest discovery, Jack What's-His-Name. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Hello again, this is Jack What's-His-Name talking, who has just been introduced by Don Who's It. <laughs> and Don, that was an awful introduction. You're nothing but an old whatchamacallit. <laughs> Well, Jack, I can put you at ease. You know, I thought you were pretty nervous last Sunday night on our first broadcast. Well, Don, why not? I mean, after all, I'm the mother of the program. And you know what we have to go through. <laughs> but I must admit that I was never so frightened in my life. You'd think I had never faced a microphone. Yes, I noticed it, Jack, and I sympathized with you. Oh, I was a wreck. I shook so much that after the program, I found dandruff in my socks. <laughs> yes, and I noticed your hands were shaking, too. What is that, Don? I said your hands were shaking. Well, they were glad to see each other. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to tell you something, Don, and this may sound silly. I was very happy to find out that I could be that nervous. You were? Why? Because it definitely proves my artistry. You know, Don, there's an old <laughs> saying that unless you're nervous, you're not a true artiste. Well, uh, <laughs> I agree with you. You know, there's something to that. Now, you take our greatest performers, any one of them. I, well, I remember one time at the Metropolitan Opera when Lily Pons walked out on the stage absolutely trembling with fright. Really? Yes, sir. And when she picked up her violin and started to play, <laughs> well, I never... Jack, Jack, what's the matter with you? Lily Pons is a singer. She doesn't play the violin. She doesn't? No. Well, that shows you how nervous she was. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we're all like that, Don. We're all like that. Now, you take our own business, for instance, radio. Don, uh, come here a minute, will you? Did you ever, uh, did you ever watch Eddie Cantor broadcast? Yes, I have, Jack, and he's very funny. I didn't ask you that. <laughs> but is he jittery? Did you ever notice his eyes when he works? I'll say. It seems like they're going to pop right out of his head. Well, they would if he didn't use glue for an eye wash. <laughs> I can mention any number of cases. Now, you take Fred Astaire. I'll take Ginger. Quiet. <laughs> no, really, you've seen Fred Astaire in pictures, haven't you, Doc? Yes, I have, and his dancing is marvelous. Dancing? Why, that's nothing but a nervous twit. <laughs> <laughs> But as I told you, Don, in show business, we're all like that. Well, I was once on a vaudeville bill with a contortionist who used to bite his toenails. Oh, was he nervous. <laughs> but you know, Don, I felt awfully sorry for Mary last Sunday. She was scared stiff. You said it. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Mary. You know, I was telling Don how excited I was last Sunday. Did you notice it, Mary? Why, Jack, you looked as cool as a cucumber. I did. And just as green. <laughs> well, it's no surprise to me. 
Archie, you were so upset you were even smoking a cigar. Well, what's unusual about that? You've seen me smoke a cigar before, haven't you? Yes, but not sideways. Oh. <laughs> well, I suppose you were perfectly calm and at ease. I never saw anyone like you. I know it, Jack. Gee, I was so worried and fidgety that I don't even remember kissing Kenny. You don't? Well, how do you know you kissed Kenny? I've been acting like a dope all week. Well, <laughs> I can understand that. But, Mary, I was wondering about the show. Did you hear any reports on our last week's program? Oh, everybody's talking about it. Oh, yeah. And I brought a swell write-up from the Hollywood Reporter. Oh, yeah? What does it say? Don't grab it. I'll read it. I'm not grabbing. Go ahead. Uh, it says, uh, The Jello Show returned to the air Sunday night, October 3rd. Mm -hmm. Mary Livingston was her usual charming self. Oh. And the high spot of the evening was her poem about Paris. Hmm. The program itself was spotty and jerky and dull at times. Oh. But Mary Livingston was her usual charming self. <laughs> What, again? Doesn't it say anything about me? Oh, sure, right here. Jack Benny got his laugh by making faces back at the audience. <laughs> I did not make faces. There was a fly on my nose. Why didn't you brush him off? Say, every listener counts. <laughs> Is there any more to the write-up, Mary? Uh, the program was very entertaining. Well. And although it was a cloudy evening with a slight northeast wind, Mary Livingston was her usual, usual charming, charming guest. <laughs> I know that. See, even the weather doesn't stop you. It's an awful write-up anyway. You'd think he'd make allowance for my nervousness on the first program. Oh, it wasn't just the program, Jack. You were upset because Abe Lyman came into the studio and threatened you. Why, because he tried to scare me into hiring his band? <laughs> that didn't affect me. The guy's nothing but a big bluff. Well, then why did you stay in the house all week? Because I was sick, that's why. <laughs> uh, I even had a doctor, didn't I, Mary? Uh-huh. Oh, is that so? What was wrong with Jack? The doctor said he had a streak of jaundice down his back. <laughs> <laughs> he did not. He did not. He said I had a breakdown from strain and worry. I didn't leave the house until Friday. Well, uh, you didn't run into Lyman, did you? No, and I wouldn't have cared if I did. And then why did you wear those great big false whiskers? Because I had a cold on my chest and shut up. <laughs> why? What is this, a third degree? Hey, Jack, what's all the excitement? Nothing, Phil, but no one seems to believe me around here, that's all. Gee, it's only natural to be tense on my first show. You were nervous too, weren't you, Phil? What for? I'm no ham. <laughs> well, I'm not either, Phil, but gee, I like to do a good job. Don't you want your music good? Don't you want your boys to play well? I wouldn't know it if they did. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that's interesting. The sponsors will be glad to hear that. I'll bet they're not even listening. Fine talk, I must say. When I think of all the orchestra leaders that will be willing to take your job for almost nothing, what do you think I'm doing? <laughs> Well, of all the, of all the ungrateful things. Let me tell you something, Phil. You talked yourself right out of something. You were in line for a raise. That line hasn't moved in three years. <laughs> oh, is that so? That's what you think. You got a raise, didn't you, Mary? I'll say. You see? But I was working in Macy's at the time. <laughs> and just for that, you won't get it. Say, Phil, even though you're not interested, I wonder if I can prevail upon you to lead the orchestra through our next musical selection. Okay. Wake up, man! Play, Phil. Now I'll sleep.
where Mr. Dodd takes the air, played by Phil Harris and his Sandman Ensemble. <laughs> Say, Phil, in spite of your attitude, your music does sound much better with those added musicians. Yes, I think so. Of course, I don't care much for that one new man you've got there. He keeps, you know, the fellow who keeps thumbing his nose at me all the time. <laughs> where? Right over there. That's the harmonica player. Oh! Oh, I didn't... <laughs> I see. I didn't get that. Oh, yeah. Hey, wait a minute. Where's the harmonica? You can't afford one. <laughs> well, I wish you'd hire musicians instead of critics. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me. Say, Jack. Yeah? Uh, those three violinists that Phil added certainly improved a lot. They have? Yeah, this week they're using both hands. Oh, <laughs> Well, anyway, a larger orchestra does help our show. Say, Phil, I forgot to ask you, did you hear any reports on last Sunday's broadcast? Nothing that wouldn't upset you. <laughs> well, it won't upset me. I want to know the truth. All right. For one thing, I read in the variety I that read you... that, so don't get smart. <laughs> Wise guy. Well, say, Jack... What, Don? Here's a great write-up in the radio guide. I brought it along. You did? Yes. You want to hear it? No, but it kills time, anyway. <laughs> It says that uh, Jack Benny inaugurates his new series of broadcasts last Sunday night, and this reviewer has seldom heard a more novel program. Well, well. The outstanding moment came when Don Wilson stated in a voice vibrant with emotion that Jell-O was not genuine without the big red letters on the box. Hmm. The sincerity with which he read that famous slogan was not only believable, but thrilling. Well, it was, Don. It was. It was. When this sterling announcer claimed that Jell-O had that new extra-rich fresh fruit flavor, he held the audience in the palm of his hand. You could, Don. You could. <laughs> uh, what else does it say? Bravo to Mr. Wilson. Let us have more of this kind of entertainment. Hmm. Uh, let's see that, Don. Yes, here you are, Mary. He doesn't say anything about me. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Uh, oh, here's something nice about you, Jack. Oh, yeah? Uh, Jack Benny, the star of the program, gave an exceedingly fine performance, as only he can admit. <laughs> well, that's more like it there. Anything else? Uh, the studio was jammed, the reception was good, and Mary Livingston was her usual charming self. <laughs> It's a fine writer. I bet you know every newspaper man in town. Well, it's a small town. Yeah. Usual charming self. Now, listen, Jack, did I write those reviews? It wasn't your Aunt Minnie. <laughs> if I'm not too subtle. <laughs> Say, Jack, are you really hurt about those write-ups? No, I'm not. You ought to see what the Waukegan Sun Gazette said about me. <laughs> Maybe it was a rave. Naturally, it was your hometown. Well, that's just a coincidence. They're very fair in Waukegan. Oh, go on. They're prejudiced because you're a local boy. They're not prejudiced. In fact, I had an uncle that was hung there. <laughs> So there. Stop showing off. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you read us the write-up, Jack? No, Don, it'll sound conceited. You can take my word for it that it's very good. Oh, I'll bet. Who wrote it? Jack's uncle, and it served him right. <laughs> well, let's drop it. You guys think hey, that... Hey, Jack, it... Jack. What? Get a load of Kenny. Yeah, look at him with a big cigar in his mouth. Cigar? Well, I'll be doggone. Hello, Kenny. Hiya, men. How's things and stuff? <laughs> well, I'll be... What do you hear from the mob? <laughs> Now, look, Kenny, just because we told you you're growing up, you don't have to rush things. Well, I'm in a hurry. Yeah? And another thing, throw away that cigar. It'll make you sick. It will not. It's chocolate. <laughs> oh, chocolate. Who's got a match? Kenny, you had me scared there for a minute. You know, your mother told me to keep an eye on you, so don't go acting up. You're getting a little too wild for a kid your age. I gotta have my fling, don't I? Fling? Well, you don't even know what a fling is. Well, when I find out, wow! <laughs> Get that guy. It's all your fault, Mary. You shouldn't have kissed Kenny last week. Well, you told me to. That's right, I did. Uh, Gee, he's got to grow up sometime. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And furthermore, Kenny, it wouldn't hurt you to get here on time. Where were you? I stopped off for a slug of root beer. <laughs> oh, a slug of root beer, huh? huh? Boy, well. have I got a hangover. <laughs> Pardon me, Kenny, I didn't give you the yes, lead I there. I'm sorry. Think... <laughs> well, pull yourself together, Kenny. It's time for your song. All right. Wait a minute. We'll answer the phone, Mary. Uh, hello? Hello, is this... J-E-L-L-O! 
Yes, Andy. Oh, hello, Mary. I want to speak to Buck. Okay, here he Say, Buck, I called up to tell you that I can't come down to the program today. I got a cold. A cold? Yeah, can't you notice it? <laughs> Not without television, Andy. It's too bad. How did you get it? Well, yesterday morning, I started to put on my underwear, and I didn't know which foot to put in first. Yeah? And while I was making up my mind, a draft snuck up on me. Well, that's a shame. You ought to take care of it. What you need is a good hot toddy. A hot toddy? Yeah. Well, what do you do, drink it or go out with it? <laughs> you drink it. Well, Andy, as long as you got a cold, <laughs> as long as you got a cold, you better go right to bed and get some sleep. I can't, Buck. Every time I snooze, I sneeze. <laughs> All right, just stay in the house then. Take care of yourself. So long, Andy. So long, Buck. It's you. Gesundheit. Well, goodbye. Oh, Andy, how did our first program go over at your house? Oh, great, Buck. <laughs> the chickens are still cackling. <laughs> well, that's fine. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> you know, the cows liked it, too. I know, Andy. I got a bottle of milk in my fan mail. <laughs> well, goodbye. Say, Buck, when's Kenny gonna sing? Right now, Andy. Wait a minute. Don't hang up. Go ahead. Sing, Kenny. Now, don't go away, Andy. Kenny's gonna do a song right away. singing Whispers in the Dark from Artists and Models, a great tune from a great picture. <laughs> and I've got a picked-up option to prove it. Gosh, did you sing that number in the picture, Jack? No, Kenny, I was too busy acting and making love. Wasn't I, Mary? Yes, sirree. 
<laughs> Wait till you ask me something. Anyway, Kenny, I heard some uh, nice comments on your song last week. Did you hear any reports on our program? Oh, swell, Jack. And I saw a great write-up for us in the Radio Daily. Well, we haven't got time for that. Oh, now. I got it right here. Oh, th what does it say? It says, uh, the Jell-O program last Sunday was dynamite, but it failed to go off. <laughs> Is that so? However, the program was fairly good. Well. And Kenny Baker was Mary Livingston's usual charming self. <laughs> Now, that's what I call a real tributy. And now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, going from the write-ups to the sublime, we will present the first in a series of highly dramatic offerings entitled High, Wide, Tall, Dark, and Handsome. I will play the part of High. Wilson will be wide. And now, who else? Boy, if we only had a handsome. Quiet. Now, in this play... Oh, pardon me, folks. Come in. Here I come. I like to hear the birdies and the pigeons. Song. Well, well. Hello, Linda. Well, Jackie Boy and Wilson and Kennel and Mary. Oh, my, oh, my, 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 my. Yep, we're all here, Slap. We're all oh, here. Oh, my, am I happy to see you. Why, you could knock me down with a cheesecake. <laughs> Hey, Phil, Phil, I want you to meet an old friend of mine. Schlepp, this is Phil Harris. Glad to know you, Schlepp. The feeling is beneficial. <laughs> well, no kidding, Schlepp. It's sure nice to see you again. All the way from New York. How'd you come out? In my trailer. Oh. It only took me eight months. Eight months from New York in a trailer? Why, did you have trouble with your car? What car? I only had a trailer. <laughs> Oh, well, in that case, it's remarkable. Only eight months. Uh, hey, Jack, with a little luck, I could have made it in seven. Why? What, what happened? My wife had a puncture. <laughs> so your wife made a trip with you. Imagine yeah. making a cross-country trip like that. Eight months. So what do you call your trailer? Schlepperman's Magic Carpet. <laughs> oh, it's a Jim Dandy. I can imagine a trailer. So how big is it? Three rooms and a swimming pool. <laughs> A swimming pool? How could you get a swimming pool in a trailer? I took out my tennis court. <laughs> well, you got here anyway. Say, Schlepp, did you hear our program last Sunday? Ah, oh, Jackie boy, it was marvelous. It was simply fascinating. There was only one thing missing. There was? And here I am. <laughs> well, I'm glad you liked it. What do you think of our new addition, Andy Devine? Oh, he's tantalizing. Well, Schlepp, you must be tired. Sit down and relax, and we'll get together later. Huh? All right, honey child. I'd like to be in the chair. <laughs> Hey, Mary, isn't it good to see Schlepperman again? Huh? Yeah, but I wish he'd take that herring out of his hand while he's broadcasting. Well, his part is typed on it. And now, uh... <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'll hello. continue with our program and offer a new series of, uh... Hello, Jack. Hello. Oh, hello, Lyman. I didn't hear you come in. Well, watch out, Jack. Here comes Mickey Rat. Just be quiet, Mary. I'll handle this. Isn't going to be any trouble around here tonight. All right, Abe, what's bothering you now? You promised to talk things over with me during the week and you never showed up. Now listen, Abe, I told you last week that Phil Harris and his band were signed up for the season. And that settles it. What about that letter you sent me? That has nothing to do with it. A letter isn't a contract. It is, too. Stay out of this, Kenny. <laughs> you I can lick. <laughs> now, Abe, I've had enough of this, so get out of here and leave us alone. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'm not afraid of you. For two cents, I throw you out in your ear. Why don't you try it? Because money isn't everything. <laughs> That'll hold you. Now look here, Lyman. You heard Jack say that I was signed up for the season, so why don't you scram? One more crack out of you, Phil, and I'll uncurl your hair. <laughs> Uncurls Phil's hair. I don't think you can do it. Well, I do. Good night, folks. <laughs> All the yellow spineless. Gentlemen, gentlemen, what seems to be the difficulties here? Oh, this guy is trying to bulldoze me. Is that so? Eh? He's feeling tippy, eh? Well, leave him to me. I'll put him in the place. Slap. Don't hold me. Oh. <laughs> now, look here, limey boy. You're talking topsy turvy. In this argument, you're all wrong. Now, listen here, you little punk. I'll punch you right in the nose. 
All of a sudden, I'm on your side. <laughs> Why are all my friends little guys? <laughs> now look here, Abe. I don't want to have to appeal to your sympathy. But I've been pretty sick all week, and, and I've been in bed with a cold. <coughs> <laughs> the doctor told me that any little excitement or worry is liable to prove fatal. Gee, Jack, I didn't know that. So put yourself in my position and try to understand. We'll talk this over when I feel better. Well, Jack, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were ill. Oh, I am. <laughs> See? All right, I'll run along and we'll talk it over later. Okay, I'll straighten it out with you. You better or don't bother getting well. <laughs> oh, it's no bother. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. Goodbye, Abe. So long, chiseler. Hmm. Can you imagine that? I hope he falls down the stairs. And now, folks, we... <laughs> well, I must be psychic. Later. <laughs> And delicious goodness. There's one dessert that brings you all three. And that dessert is Jell-O. Jell-O is as easy as can be to prepare and will help you get constant interest and variety into your meals. For there are six delicious flavors to tempt every appetite. Six lovely going colors to dress your table. You can serve it in any number of attractive ways. You'll find a group of recipe suggestions, different recipes on different packages. For instance, try orange glace, a cheerful dessert to match these cheerful autumn days. It's made with shimmering orange jello and sections of fresh oranges. It's prepared in a jiffy, and it looks delightful, and it tastes swell. There are other inviting recipes on every box of jello, and you'll want to try them all. Just be sure you get genuine jello, for only jello brings you that delicious, extra rich fruit flavor. So ask your grocer for jello. the last number of the second program of the new Jell-O series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Oh, Mary. Yes, Jack. I went to the Paramount last night, saw your picture. This way, please. You did? How'd you like it? Oh, swell, Mary. You're awfully cute in it. I thought you were your usual charming self. Isn't that a coincidence? That's just what I thought. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Buck, can I hang up now? Oh, I forgot about Andy. Good night, folks. <laughs> Help, help. Oh. Believe it or not, with me, it's now on every Saturday night for Husky. See your local paper for time and station. Kenny Baker has appeared on this program through the courtesy of Mervyn Leroy Productions. The tune, Yours and Mine, is from the picture Broadway Melody of 1938. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>